Today we're going to be applying a bootstrap to regression in this bootstrap regression example. Today we're interested in what the relationship between sports and hydration is since we are just we're just hydrationaholics. So if we want to phrase this as a regression problem, you could consider using the following regression equation. So we go ahead and have an intercept term plus sports, so the number of hours that you might play sports a day, times beta, the relationship between number of hours you play sports a day and hydration, equals hydration, hydra, or equals y. The cool thing about this is we can view this equation almost like a function. We can view regression as a function that takes in the data and gives us back a particular beta. So what do I mean? So for example, if you had a population of individuals in high school perhaps, and you applied the regression function to this entire population, you would get the true relationship of sports to hydration. You'd get the true beta. However, as we said in before, you could go ahead and take a sample, apply the function above, the regression function above, and get an estimate for what beta is. You get beta hat. This is generally what people do in regression. So for example, you could have the number of sports, the number of hours they play on the x-axis versus the amount of hydration on the y-axis. And you would generally go ahead and draw a line through all of these data points, a line of best fit through all of these data points. And this would give you the slope of this line, would go ahead and give you beta hat. This is kind of like the idea behind regression. In this case, each of our data points is not just a single point x, but it's also the pair y. So we get x1, y1, dot, 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 all the way up to x in, comma, y in, assuming that we had an initial sample of size in. So I think you can see where we're going with this. Well, if we're able to find a good estimator using the sample, what we can also do is do a bootstrap confidence interval by sampling from the sample. So we go ahead and we sample from the sample with sample size in, get bootstrap samples, apply our function to each of these bootstrap samples, and we go ahead and we get bootstrap estimates, and we go ahead and use these bootstrap estimates in order to create a confidence interval around them. Now again, the points that we are sampling from are the x-y pairs. So we're not sampling the x and the y independently. We're taking both the x and the y pairwise. So we'll either get x1 and y1, or we'll not get x1 or y1. Once we get this confidence interval, we can do something pretty cool. So for example, if we got the confidence interval of alpha and beta, we could go ahead and draw a 95% confidence bound around our original line. And this 95% confidence bound would look something like this. And then when we ask somebody, hey, how many hours of sports do you play? They might say, hey, I play three. And that might put them somewhere here on the line. Instead of giving them a single point estimate as to how much hydration we think they have, we can actually give them a bound, a confidence interval based on the confidence interval that we got from beta star. I hope you found this pretty cool.